everyone's seen a movie that's just chugging along nicely and then out of nowhere a scene just unfolds that feels so jarringly out of place that it takes you out of the film for at least a few minutes. And though a few of the scenes that are on this list were clearly written to intentionally clash with the rest of the film, for the most part they're just distracting and out of step with everything else. Occasionally for the better, but mostly for the worst. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most out of place scenes in movie history. Number 10. Alan's Dream, Jurassic Park 3 so after falling asleep during the flight to the land of the dinosaurs, Alan Grant dreams that the plane has been abandoned mid-air, and as he turns around, he's met by a velociraptor which shouts, Alan, with a human voice, causing him to wake up safely on board the plane in reality. Now, why this is out of place is because even though Jurassic Park 3 is mostly a bad movie with its fair share of goofy moments, the phone in the T-Rex's stomach, for example, is just weird, to stoop to the level of including an animatronic dinosaur that speaks to Alan is just too much. Though this scene is mercifully brief and the talking dinosaur appears for just a few seconds, it's so misguided on a tonal and directorial level that it's been impossible to forget about ever since. Number 9. Mickey Rourke's Incredible Monologue – The Expendables so halfway through the movie, the Expendables leader, Barney, swings by his pal Tool's tattoo parlor to chew the fat. Now, Barney mentions that he can't stop thinking about a woman that he left behind on his previous mission, prompting Tool to counter by recalling a mission in Bosnia many years ago that's haunted him ever since. His teammates had mostly been chopped up around him, but what truly stuck out to him is a woman who climbed atop a bridge to kill herself. And though Tool could have stopped her and perhaps saved part of his soul in the process, he turned around and simply let her do it. Now, for about 100 of the Expendables, 103 minutes, it is pure, unapologetic, nostalgia fuel B-movie schlock. But this scene? Well, Rourke delivers his soul-stirring monologue with all the conviction you'd expect from a movie gunning for Oscars. And though it's an incredibly well-acted scene, it feels jarringly awkward in a film that saw Stallone and Jason Statham nonchalantly melt a bridge full of soldiers just five minutes earlier. What's otherwise a dopey, fun action movie briefly grinds to a halt as it stops to consider the psychological consequences of war, and it couldn't clash any harder if it tried. Ride. Number 8. Pancakes – Cabin Fever so here, the central group of college graduates find themselves falling victim to flesh-eating bacteria, and one of the group, Bert, decides to drive to the nearest convenience store to summon help. Here, he's met by an eccentric young boy, Dennis, who begins screaming pancakes at Bert while performing slow-motion karate moves and eventually biting Bert on the hand. Hilariously, Dennis's father blames Bert for what happens and runs him off with a rifle. Now, Eli Roth's cult classic body horror movie is pretty weird by any conventional metric, but even so, this scene is especially bizarre. But it gets even weirder when you hear the real-life story behind this scene. You see, it was entirely improvised on the spot. Yeah. Now suddenly, it sticks out even more. Number 7. Kate Doesn't Like Christmas – Gremlins so in Gremlins, protagonist Billy's girlfriend Kate grimly explains why she hates Christmas so much, and that's because that when she was nine years old, her father went missing on Christmas Eve. Several days later, a young Kate noticed an odd smell coming from the fireplace where his corpse was discovered, having slipped and fallen in the chimney while dressed as Father Christmas in an attempt to surprise Kate, which he definitely did, and he broke his neck and died instantly. So why this is totally out of place in Joe Dante's classic Christmas film is that while this is a card-carrying dark comedy in every fiber of its being, this was still a major tonal left turn, making for an intentionally awkward, out-of-place monologue that is funny and unforgettable precisely because it's so damn unexpected. It's a fantastic scene, and the actress Phoebe Cates totally gives it beans, but even in its other dark moments, the film never gets anywhere near this grim. Number 6. The Doctor Shoots Himself – World War Z so as hero Jerry and his team are attacked by a zombie horde, virologist Dr. Fasbach panics and flees towards the interior of their plane, but the wet ramp causes him to slip and accidentally discharge his gun, blowing his own brains out in the process. Now this is such a hilariously silly moment in an otherwise grimly serious film that of course it feels like it's totally out of place. The intent here was probably to emphasize the messy chaos of the scenario and how dangerous it is to put a gun in an untrained civilian's hands, but the direction ultimately made this unintentionally laughable. Though it's it's entirely believable that somebody might die like this if a zombie invasion ever happened in real life, this doesn't mean it will play convincingly on screen, as this utterly preposterous scene proves. Number 5. Elvis's Skeleton – Robocop 2 
So shortly before Robocop first meets villainous Kane, he scours Kane's warehouse lair and discovers a weird shrine to Elvis Presley, containing pictures of the king, one of his guitars, and even what seems to be Presley's corpse itself. So why is this out of place? Well, because Elvis freaking Presley's corpse makes a cameo and it's never explained or elaborated on. That is why, even with the Robocop series' penchant for satire, this was totally bonkers. And though some deleted scenes do delve deeper into Kane's love for Elvis, considering that 99% of viewers won't care enough to dig this deep, they're destined to be left with eyebrows thoroughly and definitely raised. Number 4. Ray Gets Sexual Favors From A Ghost – Ghostbusters so during a mid-film montage, Ray has a dream that he's receiving, let's just call it what it is, a blowjob from a beautiful female ghost. And though Ghostbusters does have a thoroughly sarcastic, often sour tone, it's ultimately still aimed at kids as much as adults. So it's pretty incredible that the director managed to get away with this rather crude and unsubtle sex gag. Granted, if you grew up in the 1980s, this scene most likely flew over your head and resulted in a hilarious moment of realization many years later. But still, it feels like it doesn't really fit in with the rest of the film. Somewhat unsurprisingly, Ray's ghostly BJ is actually trimmed down from a much longer deleted scene. And while the director cut the rest of it, he just couldn't bring himself to lose the image of a cross-eyed Dan Aykroyd getting noshed off by some invisible woman. Number 3. I'm the Body Booba Kindergarten Cop the classic Arnold Schwarzenegger starring comedy opens up with a lengthy prologue of sorts where Detective John Kimball tracks down a drug lord and catches him murdering an informant red-handed. In the next scene, Kimball heads to a dirty nightclub to find the woman who witnessed his act, resulting in an intense gunfight, with Kimball shotgunning the joint to pieces. So why is this out of place? Well, at its core, it's supposed to be a kid-friendly comedy about Arnie playing against type as a teacher, but the tone of the film's opening feels like it belongs in an R-rated hard-boiled thriller rather than a PG-13 comedy. While the movie does get serious again for its final stretch as Kimball faces off against the drug lord once more, the overwhelming majority of the film is fairly frothy comedy that has little to do with drug kingpins, murder, and comically oversized weaponry. It's honestly pretty shocking that the film's intro wasn't softened in the scripting stage, but given that the film's final $200 million box office, its severe tonal whiplash didn't seem to bother audiences that much. Number 2. Carol Marcus Strips – Star Trek Into Darkness as Dr. Carol Marcus reels off an exposition dump to Captain Kirk, she instructs him to turn around while she gets changed. Now, unsurprisingly, Kurt can't help himself and turns back around seconds later to catch an eyeful of Marcus in her underwear, much to her chagrin. Now, this is easily one of the most eye-rollingly shoehorned eye candy scenes from any major Hollywood movie in the last century, and feels like something that you'd expect more from Transformers than from Star Trek. Can't Alice Eve just be a good actress who plays a smart, resourceful woman? Instead, she's reduced to a lingerie model in this sequence with J.J. Abrams' painfully obvious framing, making it that much more pandering. Now, to their very, very mild credit, writer Damon Lindelof apologized for the scene and Abrams admitted that it didn't play right, but it still must as a pretty hard cringe every single time. And number one, Cool Beans, Hot Rod. So after Rod has a falling out with his half-brother Kevin, Rod heads to his room to apologize, after Kevin accepts the apology and asks, So, Cool Beans? The pair launch into a peculiar rap battle of sorts, parroting Cool Beans back to one another, which is clearly cut together from countless alternate takes, as a beat begins to creep in and take things to the next level. So why is this out of place? Well, even for the most surreal standards of a movie from The Lonely Island, this was utterly mad and came totally out of nowhere compared to the rest of the movie. Amusingly, it was almost left out of the film until it was screened for audiences, who generally scored it as one of their favorite scenes in the entire flick. It's a scene that works precisely because it's so sudden and unexpected, and let's be honest, it's pretty much the single moment that everyone remembers from Hot Rod.